the college football experience. Miami, Ohio Red Hawks 2023 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Networks brought to you by Patreon. Yes, score exclusive perks and content available only to our patrons at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. College football experience, Miami, Ohio, Red Hawks 2023 season preview episode. I'm just gonna say Miami Red Hawks. All right, I, I don't want to like them dropping the Ohio there. We'll see week one. All right, who the real Miami is. Perhaps you're listening to this saying, Who is this idiot yelling at me? Well, look, uh, my name is Colby Swigger Database Dan, aka Pick. Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. I would have killed a normal man, but uh, now that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was... It was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. That's what you got to do sometimes, you know? Pretend it never happened, get along with your life. And uh, look, you know, last season was... I don't I don't want to say it was a failure for Miami, Ohio, but I think they want to win the MAC. That's what I think. And, uh, you know, so... You gotta look. You gotta be looking forward, not backwards, baby. Six and seven season a year ago. We're gonna talk all about it. I brought a. I, I, I'm bringing on a Red Hawk himself, and I'm excited to have him on the show because this is his, he's making his debut on the college football experience. He's been on other podcasts of mine, but he is the host uh, of this golf podcast called Off the Deck, which I strongly recommend uh, people to check out if you love golf. Uh, give, uh, give it up for Steven Doman. How you doing, Steven? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Good to be back. Uh, like you said, Miami alum. Can't believe it's uh, already been 10 years uh, since Oof. I graduated. Oof. I know. That 10-year mark. Uh, I know. <laughs> but yeah, Red Hawks looking to have a bounce back season. You know, Gabbert going down, you know, only after four games last season. Definitely hurt him. Um, but, you know, this is what the Martin's 10th year, uh, you know, going into his 10th season. So I think it's put up or shut up for him, but I uh, was just about to ask you that before, I guess we go into, uh, the specifics 10 year, 10 in the Mac. Normally you mm-hmm. got a lot of times coaches will, well, I feel like they won't last that long at the back. Either they'll leave, they'll jump for another job. Uh, he's 45 and 59. Now he did kind of inherit a mess. His first two years were really bad losing seasons. Third year, he jumps to a six and seven season. They lose the bowl game. Um, and he really has only had uh, two winning seasons, but mm-hmm. it seems like he cruises to those Bahama bowls and those lending tree bowls, uh, you know, cause he's been to, he's been bowl eligible. What? Uh, three, five, three of the last four years or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And five out of the last seven, uh, and maybe even the COVID year, they were two and one. I don't know if that counts, but I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, what, 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 it's a big year for him. I mean, 10 years, that's a long time. Like you said, with a program. So, you know, I'll give him a little bit of a pass last year. You know, you got Brady Gabbert going down and, you know, to Avon Smith's credit, he came in, I think he was like a red shirt freshman or something like that. And he's more of a dual threat type guy. Uh, but he came in, did okay. But yeah, you know, Brett, He's he's the guy, and hopefully he stays healthy this year. And if he does, then you know I think they're going to look pretty decent. So big season it, though for Chuck. It is, and and look, I'll even build the case of this too. You look at last season, 
They get blown out by Kentucky out the gate. Okay. SEC school. They kept it somewhat respectable with Cincinnati. They lost by 21, but I still feel like that was a little closer than previous years. They beat Northwestern beating a power five, obviously Northwestern now a complete mess, but it doesn't matter that game happened. That's a win. You could tout that. And then you look at the losses, a four point loss at Buffalo, a four point loss at Bowling green, a six point loss to Western Michigan, uh, a four point uh, Bahamas bowl loss to UAB. So you're four games really close to being, you know, eight, nine, 10 win team uh, a se- from a season ago. Now to be, to, to bounce back off that, I would say, okay, you beat Kent state by three, you beat Northwestern by three, you know, there were a lot of close, close games. Yeah. Yeah. 18, uh, one point win uh, against Paul state, six point win against Northern <laughs> Illinois. Every game was close. So maybe that, that's, that's with why, a backup. That's with a yeah. backup. So like I, you know, and they're not to get too far ahead, but they're returning a lot of guys on on defense. And that was really what kind of held them in those games last season. Yeah, definitely. The defense uh, was the strong suit of the team. So we're going to talk all about that. We're going to talk about the offense, the defense, the special teams, the transfer portal and go game by game on the red Hawks schedule. Uh, but before we do that, folks, I uh, want to tell you that the college football experience, Miami, Ohio, red Hawks season preview episodes brought to you by us. Yes. Sports gambling podcast, Patreon, do your part in the war against corporate gambling and sign up for the SGP Patreon. Uh, there's a ton of exclusive content contest and merch just for our patrons, plus a monthly SGP stories podcast, you know, which I mean, come on folks, Wait, this thing's going to be ad free, you know, and uh, we will highlight some of the best stories from decades of being D gens and, you know, some off the record stuff that, uh, you know, maybe the history of, of how uh, we came together, uh, you know, now that we are in what uh, 12th year of, of SGPN. Let's go. Uh, there's even a discord channel for the patrons. Uh, the sports gambling podcast. Patreon is a great way to score exclusive perks and support SGPN. Go to sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. Once again, that's sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. And remember as always folks to let it ride. All right. We are back on the college football experience, Miami, Ohio, Red Hawks season preview episode. Love those. And that's what I'm curious. I mean, I know you went there I, and I have some family that, that uh, went to Miami, Ohio as well. And, you know, uh, is that a, is that a tough thing to juggle say Tuesday night, uh, November when the Maxion's playing and uh, you got to tell the, the wife, Hey, look, you know, uh, wh- whatever TV show you don't even watch, you got to put it on ice. She's like, oh, I thought that was for Saturdays or Sundays. No, this is a Max and Tuesday, sweetheart. You don't know. Uh, we, we got a big game. Is that, is that something you got to battle, Steven? Uh, I would say normally, you know, it, maybe, but like my wife also went to Miami. Oh, so well played. I kind of well- got the, you know, <laughs> the, the green light to watch any game that they're on, you know? Fair, um, fair. And, and if not, you could say, Hey, you're not a fan then sweetheart. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Did you not go there? You know, <laughs> Put so, the pressure I, on her. I got it pretty good, but yeah, during the week, I mean, yeah, you got good football Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, but the action during the week is, you know, it kind of juices up the week leading into the, the good football on the weekend. I love it. And we've been lobbying on this, on this podcast for a long time that, you know, you have, uh, you know, between the FBS and the FCS, that's all division one football, right? Yep. Now the scholarship limit changes a little bit, but I don't understand why, why the, I get it, you know, but if we're, if we're letting TV execs have USC in the big 10 playing Maryland, then damn it. We should have football <laughs> seven days a week. All right. Now the Mac I thought was in a, very innovative, uh, you know, by saying, Hey, uh, I remember like 20 years ago, the Mac tried going Sunday mornings, like an hour before the NFL. And I would watch some of them, but I thought, I don't know if this model is sustainable, right? And, that's a, and, that's a long day of football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought, man, I was like, what's the other games kick? How would he, how I, I just don't know that it was smart, but man, moving it to Tuesday and Wednesday, I think are genius. Uh, yeah, I know some definitely. of the ratings. Yeah. And, and I, I think more football, honestly, like if you're, if you're even in the big 10, the big, bad, big 10 or the big, bad SEC, like, I'm sorry. If it's a Vanderbilt, Kentucky game on a Saturday, no one's going to watch that shit. All right. So if you move it to a Thursday, I bet you, you get fantastic numbers. And, I, and agree. Inst- I yeah. completely so, agree. Yeah. Thursday so or that, Friday. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, and, and if you're going to leave TVX in, ch- in charge and ruin all this, all this, you know, USC and Stanford have been playing for over a hundred years. 
straight every year. We're just putting a torch to that. You know what I mean? We did it yeah. with the backyard brawl and Pitt and West Virginia used to play every year. We did it to Colorado, Nebraska. We did it to, to Texas and Texas A&M, even though that's going to come back, but Oklahoma, Oklahoma state, we lose. So if we're going to do all that, then damn it, seven days a week, give us games and the Mac. I feel like is super hip to that. And I, I actually would encourage them to do it more often. Um, uh, we start things here by looking at the portal. Now, this show has been going on for a long time. I remember days where we didn't even have to touch on the portal unless it was a, they, there'd be like three guys and most of them would be like backups. Yeah. Occasionally big, you would have like a thing a, nowadays. Yeah. Now Huge. it's like, if you don't address it, you, you know, you're a fool because uh, so we try to grade it here. So I am going to rattle off what happened in the transfer portal for the Miami uh, Red Hawks here departing from Oxford, Ohio is uh Kamel Smith, a quarterback. He is in the portal. Hasn't landed home yet. Joe Humphreys as well. Another quarterback hasn't found a home yet. This one might hurt safety. Uh, Rowan Zolman goes to the Minnesota golden Gophers. Cornerback Javon Kempson is in the portal offensive guard. This one, I think pretty brutal here, rusty Feth. And this guy looks like a fucking Viking that will just throw you like the, this guy, Google image folks. If you're listening to this rusty Feth, uh, he is now a Iowa Hawkeye. And I would never talk shit to him at a bar. And uh, uh, they also lost offensive guard Caleb Schaefer to the Oklahoma Sooners. Yep, another power five. So those yeah. two linemen were big. Big, 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 man. And then uh, cornerback John Saunders comes into Ole Miss. Another power five loss. Uh, wide receiver Tyree Shelton going to Louisiana Tech and Sonny Cumbie. Wide receiver uh, uh, Angelo Butts is still in the portal. Same with wide receiver Devin Dorsey. When they're mostly in the portal, folks, that means uh, not to shit on these young men, but at the same time, that means they haven't found a home, which makes you think that they're probably backups looking for a better position, and they may find a home. Um, incoming, they did bring in a Notre Dame cornerback, Joe Wilkins. That's a nice get because Notre Dame's been very good on the defensive side of the ball lately. Offensive tackle, John Young from the Kentucky Wildcats. So it's like, okay, SEC, you're going to take some of ours. We're going to go out and get some. Uh, also landed Colorado, former Colorado and Houston Cougar quarterback Maddox cop comes in and South Carolina running back Rashad Amos. Uh, so that is what they brought in. The question is, is would you grade that a win or a loss? I mean, without knowing the production of those power five guys, they might all be great fits with Chuck Martin and the Red Hawks. I would just say without knowing, without seeing them on the field, got to be a loss right now, knowing that you got hit at the offensive line that bad, right? Yeah, I'm with you. And especially last year when I think they were like, you know, third worst and giving up the most sacks last year. So, you know, you lose two of the starters. Uh, that's not a good start uh, to the upcoming season. Um, so, I, I mean, just from volume too, it sounded like there were definitely more players that went into the portal from Miami than they actually yeah. got. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I, 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 I actually think the more that I think about this, cause I forgot for a second that Brett Gabbard did enter the portal and Chuck Martin was able to talk him back to coming, uh, you know, to back to Oxford that if you're grading that that's gigantic then. And then you'd say you oh, won yeah. the portal because you're starting quarterback, uh, who's very experienced, uh, you know, coming back now and could be one of the better quarterbacks, uh, in, in the Mac. Um, if we're, if we're judging that, then I think it's a win because he Absolutely. was able to, yeah, yeah. This Absolutely. is a guy that, that could have la landed a starting job at a lot of other schools. Remember he's re he is the younger brother to Blaine Gabbert, the former Jacksonville Jaguar, uh, in Missouri tiger. Um, let's talk about the offensive side of the ball. Cause returning seven starters. Um, this was an issue a year ago, obviously with the, uh, the injury to Gabbert. So, uh, folks should know that, uh, ahead of time that the numbers probably won't represent how well the offense would have been with Gabbard healthy, uh, but scoring offense, 112th a year ago, rush offense, 83rd pass offense, 121st total offense at 121st. And uh, they got a brand new, uh, brand new OC here. And, and Pat Welsh, Pat Welsh. Uh, now he's been, I think with the program quite a while, tight ends coach, um, but you are bringing in a new OC after those numbers. Some of those numbers though, I feel like, I think you kind of throw them out the window knowing that the, uh, your quarter starting quarterback was, was out for basically the season. 
yeah, how much? Uh, yeah. I mean, how much do you put into those offensive numbers? Uh, I mean, again, it, not, not too much. I mean, if you look at the year prior, I think Gabbard had really solid numbers, 2021. Um, so it, you know, I don't put that much stock into them. Uh, you know, looking back on it last season, I think they relied on the run game a lot. The offensive line wasn't too great. You're bringing in a young quarterback who probably didn't expect to play at all during the season uh, to replace Gabbard. So not, not really put any stock into it uh, just because Gabbard, like you said, only played four games. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, and you still bring back Smith. So you actually now have a better quarterback room than you did previously because he's got those starts under his belt I agree. Um, and bringing in Maddox cop who played at Colorado and Houston. Um, so the, the QB room, I think really deep for Miami, Ohio, Let's talk more about this offense because running back Keon uh, Mosey, I think it is. Um, he is back a um, little scat back five, seven, one eighty two, but man, he's effective. And um, so he's back at the running back spot, breaking in basically uh, just, just, uh, you know, two brand new wideouts. Uh, Miles Marshall is back at the other wide receiver spot, but Joe Wilkins, who I noted as a corner, is going to play some wide receiver. I think this year for Miami, Ohio. So, okay. Uh, love that. Look, you can sometimes, sometimes uh, I think that's actually why he, if memory serves me correct, that's why he transferred out of Notre Dame was he didn't want to be a, a defensive back. They had moved him to defensive back. So maybe you got something there with Wilkins coming in. Uh, and then miles Marshall returning is, is solid as well. Your tight end, Jack cold iron is back. Probably butchering that name. Colder uh, might be cold. Way cold iron that. sounds cooler. Yeah. Cold iron sounds really, really cool. Uh, he is back. The offensive line took huge hits, but they still are returning, you know, three starters. So like, man, the, imagine what would happen if they didn't lose those two, they would have brought back five starters. So true. Uh, all things said and done, I expect a big jump from the offense. Yes. I think if you, if you had to, to circle a, a unit that you're most unsure about, I actually think you'd probably circle the wide receiver room. Uh, second would be offensive line, knowing that you, you, you lost your two best offensive linemen perhaps, but, um, yeah, I would say that that would be the, 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 the main red flags, but I still think the offense, if, if, if Brett Gabbard, I almost said Blaine Gabbard stays healthy, <laughs> I expect them to be like a, a drastic jump from one twenty one to, you know, probably eighties, seventies, something like that. Um, how about yourself? What do you make of this I, whole I offense? I would expect that too. And those rankings, you know, in the Mac, I think they were like second worst uh, total offense and scoring. So not, not great, but as long as Gabbard stays healthy, um, I agree with the wide receiver position. They lost like their most productive wide out by far, um, you know, hip and hammer. Yeah. I great name. I, no, yeah. I, Mac, Mac hip and hammer. We would play him in DFS. Uh, and that's another thing that's great about those Tuesday, Wednesday Mac games. We do, we do uh Mac episodes for that, where we talk about uh, who who you should play in the DFS. So if you're listening to this, maybe a first time listener, uh, check out, check us out the college football experience. Cause we drop episodes like that, but hip and hammer was a stud. Yeah. He was um, very solid for them. Even when Gabbert went down, I mean, he was, I think the, like you said, Marshall is their second best guy who's coming back. And I think hip and hammer had something like 400 more receiving yards at him last season. Um, so yeah. the wide receiver spot is kind of a question mark. You get Gabbert back. I think obviously that'll help. Um, offensive line is probably second. I'll agree with you there too. Um, th I think they had a starter that was injured last season. I forget his name, Vaughn. He didn't play all of last year. Who's also coming back. I think that's one of the three th uh, starters that you said. Um, yeah. So Sam Vaughn, Sam Vaughn. Yeah, I, I think yeah. Uh, the offense, the offensive numbers should be better. Um, I also think we're going to see this uh, Avon Smith guy come in, you know, maybe a little bit, a little bit more dual threat on offense, keep the defense on their toes, throw them off a little bit um, to kind of just open some more things up on offense. Yeah, no, I could totally see that uh, because, because of the dual threat capability, maybe even go some wildcat action, but uh right. I'm also uh, intrigued by the tight end with cold iron. And then you also have Luke Bolden. I think they're pretty sound at the tight end spot. Maybe you'll see, you know, instances where they go with the double tight end set. Yep. Uh, but um, 
what I'm really excited about. So I, I, I actually feel like if Gabbert plays all 12 games, there's no way this offense is this bad, right? From oh, a statistical I completely standpoint. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're talking about, that's going to be a big jump. Then, then the defensive side of the ball, they bring back nine on the defensive side of the ball. And this is where I think you get really excited. If you're a Miami, Ohio Red Hawk fan, because they were 34th in scoring defense in the country. Um, and look, Bill Bre- Brechin, Brechin, I think it is, is the defensive coordinator and his unit was pretty impressive. 43rd in rush defense, 85th in pass defense. Now I know if we were talking about Alabama, that'd be terrible, but considering how long they were on the field, I think that's actually respectable. Uh, I agree. Six, yeah. 60th in total defense overall, which I, once again, I think this, these are very good defensive numbers and bringing back nine. I think you gotta be you know, excited about the possibilities of, of what this defense can do on the defensive line. They bring back everybody. I repeat (laughs) everybody, which that to me, like on the, on the defense normally, well, probably 10 years ago, you would say uh, defensive line is always the most important. And then linebackers probably second secondary last now with the way football has changed, you know, over the, over the, the decades, I would say defensive line is the most important. And then second would be secondary and third would probably be linebackers. Well, that's why I think you, 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 you should be really happy if you're a Miami, Ohio fan, because they bring back their entire defensive line, Caden Woolard back, Austin Ertle back, Co- uh, Kobe Hilton back, Brian Ugu back. They even got Corey subtle behind him. They have depth. Uh, the, the linebacking core, everyone back, Matthew uh, Salopak. Great name. That guy's uh, a beast. Yeah. Yeah. He's a fucking animal. And then, uh, Ty wise back, um, Oscar McWood back. Great name as well. Uh, so the secondary, we, if you went, if you go back and talk, uh, go back to where I was talking about who they lost in the portal, they lost the safety to Minnesota. That was, uh, they would have been bringing back 10. Think about it. The portal wasn't there. They would be bringing back 10, but, uh, they bring in Nolan Johnson, uh, at, at a corner spot that uh, is coming in from, from East Carolina, the greatest university ever. Um, but uh, um, <laughs> no, I, I expect I had to crowbar that in, but I expect the, so the, the safeties, Michael Dow, this is a former Michigan state kid. I know he's been here. He's stepping up. Jo- uh, Jaquez Warren, um, Eli uh, Blakey, Yashan McKee at the, uh, at the corner spot. I kind of think this defense is going to be loaded. Now you have so. I would say all three, all three units in the defense, the defensive line, the linebacking core, the secondary, all very impressive to me as far as what you're bringing back. I, I think the numbers probably are going to be better. How about you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, whenever you're bringing back nine starters on defense, it's you know going to be at least helpful from a continuity standpoint for the for the team. Um, and where football is going nowadays, where it's just pass happy, a lot of offense. You bring back, you, you got to get the quarterback, and especially yeah. in college, which it's even more of that. So you bring back everybody on the defensive line, that helps the secondary. Um, you know, less time for the quarterback to throw. So, I mean, they were pretty. I think they held the you know offenses to something like twenty two points per game or twenty three yeah. points per game last season. Um, you know, I don't expect it to get worse. Uh, I would say it's probably going to hover around that again especially when you consider how long the other, like the time of possession, if you look at oh, the yeah. stats, Miami, Ohio did, on offense was basically like, Hey, okay, we're going to, we're going to punt. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, so if you start getting first downs, the defense is on the field less, which means the defense will have more energy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and more stamina to, to perform at a higher level. So uh, I, I really like what I see kicker and punter also back in case you're, you were in a lot of close games. That shit matters Yeah, that's uh, right. in close games. So, um, we're going to go game by game on the schedule, but I, I do like what I see coming back despite their three or four big hits in the portal. Um, but look, we're going to go game by game. We're going to talk all this. Hopefully you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience folks. And remember that you can listen to this podcast, wherever podcasts can be found, uh, Spotify, iTunes, a- any of that stuff. We host, this is the college football experience. I also host the college or the FCS college football experience. You hear that Youngstown state fans. We got you covered. All right. Uh, <laughs> I also host the college basketball experience, Miami, Ohio fans. What are you doing? Like when the season starts, I'm here every single night of the college basketball season. We also host the college baseball experience and we have the big 12 experience who uh, part of our, part of our family now as well. So uh, Cincinnati fans, maybe although that's a rival, 
I know that's the rival, but maybe you want to check in on the rival and say, Hey, you know, I hate them. Let me see how bad they're going to fail in the big 12, check out the big 12 experience, but we come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. So please, if you can subscribe, tell a friend, uh, but look, I want to tell you that the Miami, Ohio Red Hawks, 2023 season preview episodes brought to you by underdog fantasy. Yes. Uh, the NFL season's right around the corner and underdog pick him is a great way to get down on a ton of NFL player props and it's available in a ton of different markets. Uh, plus there's plenty of opportunities to win in their daily MLB contests. And of course, make sure to enter best ball mania where first place gets a million dollars. What are you doing folks? Get it. Take a shot at a mill, uh, head on over to underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN for hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. That's underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. And look, I'll even crowbar this into this read, even though um, we've been with underdog uh, for, for a couple of years, they've been great to us. And I really stand by their product and what's great is they do college football when the season starts or especially like max and Tuesday, Wednesdays in November, they do uh player props and look, you can't find a lot of college football player props out in the world. Uh, I, if, uh, you know, if anything, I no, think you this might be, yeah, I think this is one of the only platforms you can uh, that I've ever seen, but man, you can find great value. If you know, if you're, if you're a Miami, Ohio fan and you're watching a ton of the Mac or, you know, I feel like if you, once again, not to plug ourselves, but if you listen to us, we've felt like we've really been great on the market at the player props that underdog fantasy has, has given out when college football season comes around and kicks. And like I said, they, on, on a Saturday, they won't dive as deep, but like on those weeknight games, which I know conference USA is playing a lot in October and then the Mac and in November, uh, they cover like all of those, all those games and, and they put the, you know, player props available for so if you're thinking Gabbard's going to throw for over 225 against uh, Bowling Green, hey, I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. So check out underdogfantasy.com, use that promo code SGPN. I think you'll dig it. All right, we are back on the college football experience, Miami Ohio Red Hawk season preview. And if you're watching on YouTube, you see this sweet graphic here. Shout out to Cam Kerr, our graphics guy, uh uh where we have the win total in the top right-hand corner. It says six and a half wins. Wait a second here. I haven't looked at the schedule yet, but if you're telling me that you went six and seven last year, even though you lost a lot of close games, sure. You won some close games, but you didn't have your starting quarterback. You return nine on defense on a very good defense without diving. I know we're going to dive into it in a second here, but blindly I would say, Oh, give me the over on Miami, Ohio. How about yourself? Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any, you know, juice one way or the other uh, with the under over. But, yeah, that seems really low, especially, you know, Gabbard only started four games last season and they won seven, um, you know. So it it does feel low. My initial reaction is, you know, hammer the over. Yeah, that's my first two. And I'm, I'm, I will quickly uh, double check about the juice here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, knowing, I, I, I feel like maybe they just phoning it in. They don't, they almost don't realize that the quarterback was out for, you know, three fourths <laughs> of the season. Um, but yeah, I mean, okay. They took some hits on the offensive line, but I kind of expect them to bounce back. So it's, it is minus 165 to the over. So they think okay. seven and five is more likely than, than six and six. Um, but still, um, let's hop into it because I still think it might be worth worthwhile. Let's do uh, it. Yeah. Week one, this game's great. I love it. <laughs> this game's great. Uh, Battle of the Miami's. Night, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this game is great. Friday, September 1st, uh, Miami gardens, Florida Remember, No one goes to those games. Cause it's like a fucking hour away from campus. Um, this is Miami, Florida folks. Uh, let me build you a case of why Miami, Ohio can win this game. Miami, Florida won five games a year ago. They lost by double digits to middle Tennessee, right? Who almost joined the Mac. Um, the year prior, I think it was, I'm fairly certain it was, they lost to Louisiana tech in a bowl game, right? Out of the CUSA, right? I think three years before that they lost to uh, Florida international in a game that they played at the Marlin stadium. This isn't Miami uh, with Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Now I get it. Mario Cristobal is trying to build that back 
He's been recruiting well. They got John Ruiz, a booster that just throws a shit ton of money. But Miami wasn't very good when we saw them play last year. So I actually think this could be a bit uh, more of a game than people think. I'm going to favor the Hurricanes, but what do, what do you think the spread is for this game? Let me see if that's out too. And uh, because if I had to I'm guess, just curious, like if I had to maybe guess, more. No, because I think Miami gets like the Notre Dame or the Duke treatment or Duke in basketball, where like I would assume like just the, the name. Yeah, I would assume like fourteen or fifteen or something. But uh, let me see if I could find this. Um, oh, wow. dude, seventeen and a half. Give me the points. Wow. Give me the points. Plus six fifty on the money line. Wouldn't that be a great way to start the season? Wouldn't that be a great way? I'll take the points though. I, 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 how do you feel about t- taking seventeen and a half? I mean, first game of the season, you know, shaking off a little bit of rust for both sides. Uh, you got to favor the underdog. Um, yeah. 17 and a half seems like a lot. I mean, do I think Miami's probably, you know, Miami, Florida is probably going to win, you know, probably. Yeah. But uh, I will say Miami of Ohio was a college before Florida was a state. So we got that going for Ooh, us. Uh, we I sold those it. T-shirts all year, baby. <laughs> uh, so I, I think. You know, I think Miami of Ohio uh, is going to have to come in and, you know, have a hot start. If they get down, you know, 10 plus early, you know, it could get ugly. But if they keep it close, uh, you know, especially with that, you know, good defense uh, that they're bringing back nine yeah. starters, I think that's going to be a key. And Miami, Ohio, or Miami, Florida is breaking in a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator. Stranger okay. things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Give me the points and the Red Hawks. Now, I shout out to Miami, Ohio, because they are road warriors on the schedule. And maybe this is why the number is a little lower than what we thought. Because they open up the first three games on the road, the first three weeks, all on the road. And 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 they play seven road games. That's a lot of fucking travel. It's like the Rolling Stones in 69 here. Just I'd rather I'd rather have that, honestly. <laughs> honestly, it, it just real quick, I'd rather have that because when I went to school there. And, you know, this is going to sound, you know, kind of shitty, but I only went to one home game, one Ooh. home football game Ooh. when I went there. Uh, it, What's the logic there? What's the logic? It's just bad time Tuesday nights and you're studying or what? Uh, it wasn't. I mean, they I, I feel like they didn't allow or they didn't promote tailgating outside of Jaeger Stadium. So, like. You know, when I went, you know, half the stadium is empty. And I don't know if Miami kids would rather go to, you know, frat parties or something like that, you know, bars and whatever, but there just wasn't a lot of people into going to the games. Um, we were also horrendous when I was there. I think my freshman year, we won like uh, one game. That, so. that happens, man. That, that actually can kill it because yeah. even uh, at ECU, ECU was great for a lot of years, a very good mid major and things were packed. And then they hired Scotty Montgomery and look, I want to say they're not fair weather fans, but Scotty Montgomery made it hard. Like it wasn't that, that like, you can go one and 11 as long as you're feisty. Yeah. But when, I mean, Navy came into ECU and won by like 47 points and you're just like, <laughs> what you're like yeah. this, I can't support this. You know what I mean? So uh, uh, I get what you're saying there in that capacity. So hitting the road, a uh, first three weeks, they now head up to the McGurk in Amherst, Massachusetts, take on UMass. UMass was terrible last year. This is this a win. This is a win right here. I like uh, it. Yeah, and 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 I still think like UMass will probably be better in November. So the fact you get them in September, I like it. So I will say one and one. You're joining here. I'm joining you. I'm with you so far. All right, and then they had to nip it to take on Cincinnati, which I actually think there's potential for this to be a lot closer, the closest it's been in a long time, because there was a mass exodus with Luke Fickle leaving for Wisconsin. And a shit ton of players transferring out, and they go get Scott yep. Satterfield. Now, now Satterfield brought in some players. Emory Jones was like seventy-five years old, starting at quarterback for uh, for Cincinnati. But I actually think this could be a game this year. I favor Cincy because they're you know uh, they, they're at home. Re- yeah, they've been recruiting well, but uh, so I got about one and two. What do you? I, you- I, I think you're probably right, and honestly, I would say there's going to be more Miami of Ohio fans that go to that game than you know maybe another home game you know in Ooh. Oxford. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, Delaware State comes to town next. I think that's a that's a clear cut dub. They're in the FCS. Yep. They're not a great team in the FCS. So two and two, 
And then they head to Dick stadium in Kent, Ohio. And look, this is the one, this is the one here because Kent state, Sean Lewis, now the offense coordinator of Colorado, he's with Deion Sanders, their whole team left this. I think they might be the worst team in all the power five. So I three and two through the month of September for me, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm with you. I think wasn't Kent state, um, you know, something like two and 10 or something last season. They, they were not great. And you know, like yeah. you said, they're got a lot of players leave and I think it has to be a win for Miami. Yeah. I just think that they could be really, really bad this year with the amount of people they lost. They, 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 they weren't two and 10, but they, they, they were a losing team a year ago. Is that um, a home or away for Miami? That's an away, but that's, a, that's what I want. I, if I'm a Miami, Ohio I prefer fan, that. Yeah. You get UMass and Kent state on the road. So three and two through the month of September, once again, that win total sitting at six and a half. Now you host Bowling Green there at Jaegerbaum Stadium, and uh, I, I, I think you're better than Bowling Green. Bowling Green, they they lost the most production from a year ago of any of the 133 schools. So I expect a lot of regression. I know Bowling Green made a bowl, lost the bowl game to New Mexico State. This is in Oxford. I think Chuck Martin and and the Red Hawks bounce or not bounce back, but continue it to go, move to a three game win streak and move. Two, four, and two. How do you have this one shaken out? I, uh, I would favor Miami to win. Um, you know, Bowling Green kind of gets a little, little feisty. They got a little Miami in them from last year, where I, I don't think it's going to be. It, it'll be a nail better of a game. That's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, yeah. You know, after a you know probably a pretty decent sized win against Kent State, maybe Miami's feeling themselves a little bit. They come home, maybe think that they're going to roll on them and it's a closer game than they think. So I, I think Miami's going to win, but I think it'll be a little, little, uh, you know, I close. Yeah. Yeah. Close. Uh, the, like a lot of those games went last year. So that would put us at, uh, that would put us at what four and two. And then you gotta love the schedule so far because they head to Waldo <laughs> stadium in Kalamazoo where, uh, where Western Michigan, once again, Western Michigan, uh, they fired their head coach, uh, uh, Tim Lester uh, almost drawn, and they hired Lance Taylor, but this is year one. You got to love that situation. Uh, October 14th, Waldo stadium, Kalamazoo, Michigan. I think they go in there and get the dub. Cause I just think they're a better team. And, and once again, <laughs> I love the fact you're getting them early. If you're getting I them agree. in no- November. Th- yeah. So, I mean, we're at five wins right now. The win total six and a half. What, what uh, do we know that the Vegas, you know, what does Vegas know that we don't know? <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I guess maybe these next two games get tricky because the Toledo Rockets who won the Mac a year ago, come in good team. on October 21st, very good team. And, uh, but still you got to like the fact you're getting them at home. And then the, the very next week you are at Ohio who played in the Mac championship against Toledo. So you're getting the two Ohio won 10 games a season ago. Um, I think it's very possible. You go one and one here, but I, I could Let also him. see zero and two. I could also see zero and two, but I, I I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say one and one. I think it's probably a little more likely they get Toledo than Ohio because it's at home. Yeah. But I, I think one and one there, and that would put them at, uh, that would put six. them at what six right there, six and two or six and three. I'm sorry. So I'm curious. Do you think one and ones is, is a realistic, uh, you know, call, shot for them? Yeah. I, I think, uh, those are two tough games are, you know, probably the two best teams coming from, from last season. Um, I would kind of predict one of them is going to be a dud, you know, probably Miami doesn't have a chance in that game, but I think one of these is going to be close and, you know, it helps to, you know, last season they played in a number of close games. So I think that experience will help them. Um, I think the win, I think one of them will be close and I think they, they go one and one. There we go. But look, you got a bye week on November 4th, and then you start these these crazy weekday games. Home to Akron, who I actually think is going to be a lot improved this year. Okay. Uh, but I still think Miami, Ohio is a better roster right now. Joe Moorhead's in year two at Akron. So I will take Miami, Ohio to win this, and boom, that's your seventh win. That's- and there's still two weeks left. So the, the very next week, they host Buffalo. And then the final week they're at Schumann stadium in Muncie, Indiana against ball state. I think they'll probably go two and one on, uh, on that final stretch after the bye week 
So I'm giving them wins against Akron, Buffalo, a loss in Muncie. Even if got, they go, even if they go one and two, I mean, they still hit the the win total over. So yeah, I think it's a pretty safe bet. I mean, the only thing that would fuck this up is if Gabbard gets injured again. But um, right, I feel pretty pretty good about them being eight and four, seven and five, something like that. Especially knowing all that defense goes back in. I yeah. actually, and you know what's crazy is is if you compare it to last year's schedule. Last year you had Kentucky, right, and Cincinnati with Luke Fickle. Well, I think this year's schedule and Northwestern, you had three power fives last year at, in the non-con uh, this year. You don't have three power fives. You have Cincinnati. Who's a, a worse version of Cincinnati from a year ago. I think anyone, no, everyone would agree with me on that. I feel like, and you have Miami who was a, a kind of a, a, a classic underachiever a year ago. So yeah. And, and who, that Kentucky and, team last year was, was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, you saw Levis get drafted Levis, yeah. and yeah, you know, they, they got guys. So you also replaced the Northwestern game with UMass. I think it's a lot easier of a schedule than a year ago. I love the over here. I think you might even hear me talk about this over on our locks pod. How confident do you feel that. about the, over? yeah. How, I mean, how, after, how, after going through the schedule, you got to feel pretty good. Um, yeah. The out of conference games are for sure easier than last season. Um, and we still gave them yeah. losses in Miami and Cincinnati. Imagine if they were to pull one of those upsets. Ooh. Um, I mean, I'll be honest, like there's not, I get it. There's 17 and a half point dogs at Miami, Florida, but Miami, Florida was like a 21 point favorite in middle Tennessee one last year. Now, obviously Crazy we, stuff happens. Yeah. Obviously <laughs> we, we, we take Miami, we took Cincinnati, but I don't know that there's a hundred percent clear cut loss now, probably Miami, probably Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. But after after that, I mean, all the other games to me are winnable. I don't. I'm not calling for them to go, you know, ten and two. I think eight and four, seven and five, best case scenario, nine and three. But I love this over right here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna load up on it. I see why it's juiced a little bit, but I I don't care. I think you know, uh, even if Gabbert gets injured, I think you bring in Maddox Cop, having the 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 backup there that played some 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 minutes there a season ago yep. is en- encouraging. So. I will take the over and I feel decent about it. It seems like you are as well. Yes, sir. Um, there we go. So uh, look, before we get out of here, um, I had a chance to sit down with Michael Barker, AKA college football campus tour. If you haven't followed this guy on Twitter, you need to, because this guy goes to like 7 million games a year. Uh, I, I'm being sarcastic, but at the same time, folks, like he goes to like six, seven games a week uh, and he lives in California and he just bounces around. He's not a trust fund. He's just, bouncing around, going to college football games and he documents it all. And I'm not talking about just like a, a you, you know, like the way, if I went to a stadium, Oh, I'm here at the game. No, he does like professional photos, talks about the history, finds cool things about the stadium, all that good stuff. Here's uh, that interview with Michael regarding Jaeger, Jaeger Bob stadium, as I call it there in Oxford, Ohio. Yeah. Joining me on the college football experience, Miami, Ohio Red Hawks 2023 season preview episode is none other than Michael Barker, AKA college football campus tour, which you should be following on Twitter at CFB campus tour, because the guy's been to every single game ever. I feel like, uh, look, he, uh, he goes to, he's been to every FBS stadium and he goes to like five, six, seven games a week sometimes. So, I mean, if that's not a strong enough reason to follow, I don't know what the hell, why the hell you're listening to this podcast, but, uh, but also I'll add in that he's got the photo of the game, which is an all, normally awesome. And then you have the, he, he, his page kind of like shows the history of these stadiums, the way they're built, you know, in their first year. So some of those legendary stadiums, or in, in this case, Francie Jaeger bomb stadium. All right. So tell me about Jaeger stadium and, and Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me and, and a nice introduction. Uh, so Jaeger stadium, Miami of Ohio. Um, it's in the Mac. We know that it opened in 1983 capacity, 24,000. It's actually named after uh, Fred Jaeger, who was the class of 1914, who was the lead donor for the stadium project when it, uh, before it opened in 1983. Uh, it seats 24,000, but the record crowd was 30,087 in 1999 versus Marshall. And one of the, the, the most unique things about the stadium, and, and they do it incredibly well, is uh, Miami of Ohio, the school is known as the cradle of coaches because they've had so many significant Hall of Fame coaches get their start or make their way through 
Miami of Ohio. So underneath the scoreboard in the south end zone, they have these bronze statues, which are one and a half times in size of the regular people, and they're all lined up. And you got the likes of Paul Brown and Weeb Eubank and John Harbaugh and Bo Schembechler, Era Parsegian, and most recently, Sean McVay. And so, you know, John Harbaugh, Sean McVay, Super Bowl winning um, coaches. You got Paul Brown, obviously, founder of the Browns and Bengals. Era Parsegian won national championships at um, at Notre Dame. Bo Schembechler, big time, you know, Michigan coach, 10 years of war with Woody Hayes. And then we Eubank coached uh, the New York Jets in Super Bowl three. So all those coaches came through and they're all lined up. And, and you know, so when you go to Yeager Stadium, you're going to take in the game, but you should really spend a few minutes walking around and, and checking out the statues uh, from the cradle of coaches. Yeah, that sounds awesome, man. That 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 sounds really cool. And and what we love about the Max they're playing those Tuesday, Wednesday games. Uh, I think the Maction should actually do more of that. You know, like more. I'm sorry. I think the Max should do more Maction games uh, on those weeknights because uh, you, we get you know all eyes on deck here or all hands on deck to watch those uh, to watch those games. Uh, how many times have you been to Jaeger Stadium? So I've been to two games there: one in 2019 and one in 2021. Uh, the most memorable game was in 2021. It was a Tuesday night action game, cold but perfect, and uh, they beat down Bowling Green 34 to seven. And uh, you know, when it's a blowout like that, you get a chance to walk around the stadium, and, and that's what I did. So uh, I'm also going back there. They have another action game Wednesday, November 15th in Buffalo. So I will get my third game at Jaeger Stadium under my belt later this year. Awesome. Awesome, man. I got to get out there, man. Love the Mac doing these, uh, doing these Tuesday, Wednesday games. And then I love the, the statues that they got going some personality to, to Jaeger stadium. Uh, folks, make sure you give Michael a follow as I alluded to at CFB campus tour, because like I said, I mean, how many people have been to every FBS stadium and most of the FCS even sprinkles in, I feel like the D two D three stuff like that. You gotta check it out. It's just a must follow for anyone that loves football. In my opinion, uh, Michael, thanks for coming on the show, man. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful day, man. You too. Thank you as always for having me on your show. Uh, you're always welcome here, man. Thank you. And take care. You too. Michael Barker, Jaeger Bob stadium. Like I'm here with Steven Dolman and uh, look, he's, he's been to it only one time. Cause he was too busy uh, chasing women. I feel like, and uh, <laughs> you know, but Hey, Get out there. You look homecoming. What are you doing? Go back to get, get to Oxford. Check out a game. Chuck Martin's got a winner in town, Dude, uh, especially with us picking over, uh, you know, eight, nine games. I might have to go back for a game this year. There we go. There we go. So folks, uh, a, a hit a game this year, but B check out, uh, check out Steven. I want to thank you for hopping on the show, Steven, because uh, you know, you do, you do good work. there. the host of the golf podcast off the deck. And I look, I wanted to get an alum on to talk about his experiences uh, to, to Oxford. Uh, I, I've always heard it's a low key, great party school. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty, pretty yeah. big uh, party school. It's, I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere, you know, when you're driving there or whatever, you're driving through cornfields, but it is a beautiful campus. Um, you know, a lot of like the high street is where, you know, the strip of bars, it's a great place. If you're, you know, going to visit, send your kids, the business school is incredible. Um, so the campus is, is a great, uh, you know, it's a great campus. Folks get out there, check it out. Uh, go catch a game and Steven appreciate you hopping on the show. Uh, folks, Thanks give for having a, me. Like, anytime, man. And, and, and Steven's on Twitter, by the way, at off the deck pod. Uh, that's a golf bo- uh, podcast uh, doing great work with, with golf. Uh, how often you golf in these days, man? Hey, anytime I can uh, there you go. <laughs> a couple times a week, I'll get out there. Um, you know, we post videos, reels. We got the tracer going on. So, uh, you know, check us out. You might learn a thing or two, or you might learn something not to do with your swing. So it's all fun. <laughs> and look, if you're talking college football fans, you guys know all, all business gets done on the golf course. That's right? true. So, so you want to know about realignment? I guarantee you, 
I guarantee you USC and UCLA joined the Big Ten over over a, a game of golf. Guarantee you a few margaritas, game of golf. Guarantee <laughs> you that happened. Uh so check out Steven's work though and, and and like like they're covering it all, you know, come on, golf is 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 a sport that keeps growing and growing. So please check out his podcast. They do great work. And uh look, check out us too. I think we do great work um sometimes. Right? Uh look. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there we go. At, at uh, t- we're on Twitter at t- TCE on SGPN. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. But like I alluded to earlier, we host all those different solo podcasts: the college football experience, the FCS college football experience, the college basketball experience, the college baseball experience, the Big Twelve experience. It's a lot of fucking shit. I'm yeah, I'm just throwing at you. But uh, folks, we come together as one on YouTube. YouTube.com/slash the college experience. Please, if you can, hop on over to iTunes, give us a five star review. We always enjoy that. And even if you tell me I'm an idiot, just give us the five stars. I'll I'll, I'll take it all day. Uh, also get the SGP and app. It's free to download in the app store and Google play store and come check out uh, our discord. Look, a lot of those times, Maction games, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, maybe your wife's working, maybe you're single, you know, maybe you're, maybe you travel for, for work and damn, if you're not on the road, you're at the airport on a Tuesday night, uh, at the airport bar, sucking back a beer. And, uh, you know, you got no one to talk to about why is uh Brett Gabbert throwing for 500 yards against uh, Bowling green. Well, there's a little thing called our discord where there's just a, just like a house party of DJs hanging out there. Right. So just hop on over there. Sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. We got all sports covered too, whether it's golf, whether anything, it could be a fucking game of dominoes happening in an alley in uh, Mexico city. And I think we got you covered folks. Uh, so check us out there. Like I said, sports gambling podcast.com slash discord uh, stick around next week. We got Phil Steele coming on the show to talk college football folks. Check us out. This is the college football experience. Miami, Ohio, Red Hawk style. You better start thinking about yours. And we out of here. Run.